Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Corey from Jacob's Garage again, and today we'll be learning how to conduct a cylinder leak down test. And also, I have my little helper here, Bentley. What's up? All right, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we'll need is a cylinder leakage tester kit. Uh, this particular model is a Maddox that I picked up from the local Harbor Freight. Uh, again, uh, I've used this uh, tester kit several times. It's been very dependable. Uh, you don't need a real expensive kit to uh, get the job done. I've seen people have snap-ons, uh, any other high-priced name brands. Again, uh, you just need a, a decent, durable cylinder leakage tester kit to get this job done. And then next we want to test and set up our cylinder leakage tester kit just to make sure it's functioning properly before we start any major project. As you can see, I've already set up my uh, air hose from my compressed air tank. And then uh, we've already, it's already set at 30. And I, when you read the directions on some of these kits on this particular model, they recommend that you only set it up to 90. Don't set it all the way to 100. Uh, for A, it might damage the uh, gauges, and two, you might not see all the fluctuations and it might not what they call zero, a true zero once you set up the kit. So to zero this, you, it says uh, pull to adjust. So we're gonna pull this out and then we're gonna turn slightly right until we reach the uh, desired adjusted pressure we need. Again, I always use 90 just to give enough pressure in the cylinder and we're not fully 100% so we don't damage our gauges and or get an accurate reading if we have more pressure in the cylinder. All right, that's about as close as 90 as I'm going to get. So if you read directions, it says push the lock. We want to lock it back in because we want us to keep the pressure at 90 or as close to 90 as possible. And now we're ready to set up to cylinder number one and see if we have any leakage going on. Okay, so today's leakage test will be uh, done on my old 455 rocket engine. This will be part of my project Cutlass uh, that you'll see several videos of, of my engine build. And we're, as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do in the engine bay and the rest of the Cutlass to get this back up and running on the road. And just as a side note, there's a couple of different ways we can go about conducting this cylinder leakage test. Uh, first and foremost, the main way or mo what most mechanics and people like to do is to identify which cylinder they want to conduct the test on. Uh, if you want to just conduct a test on all cylinders, uh, best practice is to start with uh, cylinder number one. And when you, before you get to each cylinder or conduct a test on each cylinder, you need to ensure that that cylinder or that piston is, what is located at what they call top dead center on the compression stroke. So that makes sure all the intake and exhaust valves is closed and you conduct the test on that cylinder and then move on to the next cylinder and rotate the engine until that piston is what is located at top dead center on a compression stroke. However, today's test, I'm going to remove the valve cover and take apart the rocker arms because I'm going to replace this old cast iron heads with the new Edelbrock aluminum heads for the 455 to upgrade the engine. Okay, so now let's get started. First thing I wanna do is take my spark plug wires off the spark plugs. Uh, I don't really care. I'm gonna go ahead and take them all off. Since, and I've already got them numbered. Uh, with this being cylinder number one, cylinder number three, number five, and number seven per firing order on this side. And then we'll have my helper Bentley. We're gonna go ahead and take off the other side. All right. Just pull it straight out. There you go. Just lay it down. They're already numbered, so we know which order to go back in. And cylinder number eight. All right, thank you. Okay, so now you got some basic instruction while we're removing some of the items uh, once we uh, attach the compressed air to the chamber and listening for a hissing or a compressed air noise, uh, we can get started. 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the spark plugs and then I'm gonna remove the carburetor. If you got a carbureted engine like mine, all you have to do is open up the throttle to see if there's any air escaping through the intake. Uh, in this case, as you can see, there's a lot of corrosion around my carburetor. I'm gonna have some machine work done to it and have it freshen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it so I can. So now you have the basic instruction and what we're gonna do in this project. Um, I like to get started. So without further ado, let's start removing some of these spark plugs. One. And I'm just gonna leave the others in for this uh, moment. Simple being, I don't like a lot of trash getting into my chamber in case the engine is holding compression. Uh, and I'm just gonna rem remove the cylinder heads. After the test, if the engine block's good, I'm gonna leave it in the car. Um, I don't like a lot of trash get down there. So we're gonna leave the other spark plugs in right now if we're not actively testing the chamber at this time. Next, I wanna remove the fuel lines from the carburetor. In this particular setup, I gotta use a 11 sixteenths and a 13 sixteenths. All right, now we're going to hook up the uh, tester up to the cylinder. All right, as you can see, it's building up. Uh, pressure going in the cylinder is 70, moving up. As you can see, it's holding compression and building compression. Once it stops, we'll do our reading. And while we're waiting for that, uh, another quick note. What I usually like to do is I like to write my results down on a piece of paper. So when I do each cylinder, I'll see the actual readings of what the compression going in and what is actually holding. So I can see if there's a fluctuation between each cylinder and how much there might be. All right, so as you can see, sorry the compressor is going on in the background. I see we got 70 pounds of pressure going in the chamber or, or actually through the regulator. And then we're holding out at about 64 pounds. Typical rule of thumb is, you know, once you're 10 pounds of pressure difference or more, that's uh, considered moderate or heavy. And then uh, you probably want to look and see if there's any hissing going on and see where you're not holding compression at, whether it's through the intake valve, exhaust valve, or through the piston rings. All right, so this cylinder seems to be doing good. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, YouTube, this is the uh, results of uh, conducting a cylinder leak down test on each and every cylinder. Uh, looks like I got two problem, um, two issues with two different cylinders. So cylinder number three, uh, 70 pounds of pressure going in and only four, maintaining 14 pounds of pressure. Uh, when I did a quick investigation, it sounds like the sound was coming from the exhaust side. Um, in this case, it was uh, coming out of the exhaust side of my header. Um, moving on to cylinder number eight, 70 pounds of pressure going in and only maintaining 32 pounds of pressure. After a quick investigation on looking for the uh, compressed air where it's escaping to, sounds like it was coming through the uh, intake manifold. So uh, more than likely the intake valve was stuck loose or not uh, close, making a complete close and therefore is not holding compression in that cylinder. All right, YouTube. So now you saw an instruction on how to do the cylinder leak down test. Uh, we show you one and you just do it every subsequent cylinder or every other uh, piston chamber you want to do. I uh, repeat the steps and again if you have any issues comments or questions uh, just remember to fill out the comment section and like and subscribe to my channel all right buddy what do you say uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one